This is the Twinkle Star rechargeable selfie light. So it comes with a clip-on mount for attaching to the top of a laptop or a cell phone. The light panel itself, which has your standard quarter-inch connector, micro USB charging, two buttons and a power button, can be mounted on either the top or the bottom. Instructions and a tripod. This tripod is made out of, it looks like just wire, possibly aluminum, but very bendy wire covered with rings of foam, so you could theoretically use it as a gripper to grip something, or, well, <laughs> don't bend it too hard. Yeah, I uh, broke off a little piece of plastic that was holding onto that. So the tripod is not terribly sturdy, and it comes with a charging cable. So it plugs in with a micro USB cable to charge. While it's charging, this red light will light up. Luckily, I was going to be using it with this guy. Wow, that is, there we go. It was stuck a little bit. I think the adhesive had gotten stuck. But after you squished it out, now it's just hard to do with one thumb. But that'll definitely grip onto things. There are pieces of thin foam or rubber on the inside, so it doesn't look like it would scratch anything. And it has a tripod attachment point here. So, push the power button. Now it turns on. It has cool white and warm white LEDs in there. And I'm assuming by pushing the left and right buttons, you can make it brighter. There's brighter. All right. Here's dimmer. And if I tap the power button, I can cycle through different amounts of LEDs and different color temperatures. So you have the warm white, the bright, cool white, the combination of both, and then various percentages between there. So it looks like you have one, two, three, four, five different modes. And then in the modes, you can adjust the brightness with the buttons on the back to get the level you would like. And if you press and hold, it turns off. Yeah, I, I want to talk about just how snappy this tripod is. I was trying to bend this other leg back straight and it snapped off. And, you know, I mean, I'm not really putting a lot of force on these guys, but, well, this one's holding up a lot better than the other two. But um, it is very cheap plastic construction. You know, the, the ball mount and pretty much everything here except the screw and a little screw inside there and some nuts are, are is plastic. Um, you know, so that tripod is pretty much useless. This clamp clip looks to be slightly heavier duty plastic at least. Um, so we're going to be using it with this. We'll try a cell phone and a laptop. All right, I've identified a little bit of a design flaw with this clamp. So, you know, it rotates and you have to tighten it to keep it from rotating. But once you've installed the twinkle light, when you rotate this, it hits the light and you can't tighten it anymore. So I'm going to have to actually take this off and then set it to where I want it to be and then push this past where the twinkle light was and tighten it down and then put the twinkle light back on. Now that might just be because I had it where I needed to go, you know, multiple times. Um, it might be that now I can undo this to here, adjust, and then clamp down again. So it looks like if you have this set appropriately, you only need to turn it about a quarter turn to release and tighten down to hold position. Now the clamp has a big hole in the middle. My camera is off on the side so it doesn't affect me, but if your camera was directly in the middle, you could put this over the camera like that um, and do that. It's probably about the same weight as my phone. So my phone's on the lighter and smaller end of things and it's six ounces. Um, and this guy with the clip arm clamp is five ounces. So, you know, it's a little bit lighter than the phone, a little bit bulkier. Um, you know, holding it up isn't difficult, but I wouldn't want to have a multi-hour video conference where I'm holding this up. And so it makes the phone a little top heavy, but it's not heavy enough so that this would be unwieldy to hold on. Now it is 
pretty well held on there. I mean, you wouldn't want to run with this thing, but it's gonna, it's not gonna move as long as you're not vibrating your phone around. It just stays put. Um, so let's uh, switch over to the phone camera and shoot some videos with that. So to allow you to judge the amount of light in this environment I was using for testing, you know, it's pretty dim. There's light coming in from behind my curtain from outside, um, and you can see what's going on, but this is not a good environment for taking videos. So this room is visibly dark. My phone camera um, does a pretty good job, all in all, with the ambient light. I'm going to turn this on. And that's very bright. You can definitely see the reflection in my eyeglasses. You know, I don't have the, uh, the ring light effect there. It's a big square, but you know where the light is. Now, if I didn't have my glasses on, you could probably see something in the retinas, um, but you don't get that ring in the retinas, at least. All right, I'm going to try to dim this. I forget if it's left or right for dimming, so we'll push one. Okay, I guessed right. So this is the absolute dimmest setting, and, you know, I'm not washed out. So, you know, I think it's certainly um, the dim dimmable setting there. I think the dim goes dim enough so you're not washing out. And then we're going to move up to the highest setting. Now there, you know, I am getting washed out. Um, so if you were going to have this farther away or you really wanted a lot of light, you could do that. Um, let's flip to a couple different modes. This is the all warm white warm white light mode. And I'm going to flip here to the all cold white mode. And then all of the other modes are just mixes of the different amounts. And I don't know the exact percentages here. You could, you know, play with it and figure out which one you liked the most. Um, personally, I think probably you want just a 50-50 mix between the two. Or maybe the warm white mode. My, my my guess here is this is the 50-50 mix mode right here. Um, and it says it has 10 different brightness settings, so I can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, and there's the 10 different brightness settings. So my laptop has the camera right there, so when I put this on I'm going to be bracketing that camera like that. Now I've chosen to mount this with the control buttons on the top so I can reach over the top and access them as opposed to trying to reach through the bottom and access them. So the six ounces of extra weight is not really a problem on my laptop. My hinges are tight enough that you know it's not really causing it to lever and, and fall over anything. Um, if your hinges were not as tight as mine that might potentially be an issue. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, this is my webcam built into the top of my laptop with no light. It's doing okay. Now when we turn this on, there's a lot of light. You can see I'm kind of getting washed out here and there. This is the brightest setting. Um, I'll take my glasses off so you can judge reflections and so forth. Now this is the mixed setting. So if I tap it, we can go down to just warm light or we can do nothing but cold white light, or we can go back to the mixture of the two. Um, this is the highest brightness setting, so I'm going to crank it down. There's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And so this here is the lowest light setting, so that's the adjustability on this. Now I am using the hole in that clamp to bracket my camera because the camera is centered on the top of my laptop. Um, you know, I can shake my laptop around. My hinges are not super loose, but it has, it has no trouble holding it up there. If your laptop hinges were, were loose, that might cause things to flip down because it's adding a little bit of weight to the top. Um, but all in all, it's working quite well on the top of my laptop. Okay, I have procured a replacement tripod, and this guy is fully charged. It claims a battery life of max five hours, so I assume that when they say max five hours, that's with the best possible conditions. So what I'm going to do is use half the LEDs, and I'm setting this not to the brightest, but I'm setting this to the dimmest power setting with those LEDs. And I have my time-lapse camera going with the clock, and we will check this and see how long it lasts. 
All right, I am impressed here. Um, I assumed when they said it has a five hour run time that they you know, turned the, the brightness all the way down and did the least power consumption to get that five hour run time rating. Um, and so I turned the power, you know, it's all the way to the dimmest setting and I'm only using you know, half of the LEDs. Um, and this thing's gone for 12 and a half hours so far and it's still going. Uh, I was fully expecting to come out this morning and find it turned off and have to look at the uh, time lapse to figure out when it turned off. But if you set this thing down to the dim setting, it has some pretty serious runtime. You know, we're talking 12 plus hours here. So I guess I'm going to let it keep going. All right, that light finally went out. So I can tell you if it's on the dimmest setting, um, you got a lot of runtime on that thing, at least 18 hours. I'll have to check the time lapse to see the exact amount. All right, that guy was fully discharged, so I'm going to charge it back up through this USB power meter, which will keep a record of how much power it takes to uh, fill it back up. All right, this guy's fully charged. It's drawing zero amps because it's fully charged, and to charge it, it took almost exactly two amp hours. All right, so the last test, I made the mistake of running this at its lowest power setting. This time, I am going to run it at its highest power setting. So we have both LEDs the warm white and the cool white, and I've turned it all the way up. And we will see with the time-lapse camera how long that takes. All right, at the full brightness power, it did not last overnight, so I'll have to check the time-lapse to see exactly how long that lasted. All right, I've charged this guy up fully again, and the total capacity here was 1.9 amp hour, so that is very much in line with the 2000 milliamp hour battery that the specifications claim. Alright, final thoughts on the Twinkle Light selfie light here. Um, I want to give them a lot of credit for meeting their specifications. They say this has a 2000 milliamp hour battery in it. When I discharge it all the way, charge it back up, I'm getting almost exactly 2000 milliamp hours going back into it. Um, they say it has a five hour battery life. I tested it at the full brightness setting. It went four hours and 50 minutes. When I tested it at the lowest brightness setting, it actually went for 22 hours. So, you know, it meets the specifications that they say. Now, the light panel itself functions perfectly. Um, it's, you know, it's a plastic case, but it's solid. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's not cheap looking, but, you know, it, it's plastic. Um, but it's, it's solid. It's, I don't feel like it's going to break or anything. It, you know, it works pretty well. Um, the clip that they provide works pretty well. It's also, you know, plasticky, but it works pretty well. Now, the tripod, absolutely worthless. Uh, it broke in my hands as I was playing with it. Um, and then another leg broke. So it, it's just, if you're going to, if you're buying, don't buy this for the tripod. Um, also, the price point, it's a $25 price point, which is, um, for what you get, I think just a little bit too high. Um, I've seen $35 selfie camera lights that have a lot more features and a slightly better build quality. So, you know, the $25 with a tripod that falls apart, yeah, you know, it, it's up there. So if you like the fact that this easy controls, it's super easy, you know, it's basically brighter, dimmer, and then you have a couple of different color modes. And if you want super easy to use, super easy color controls, um, only white light of different color temperatures of white. Um, and if you're using it with a clip arm for a laptop or a, a um, cell phone, then it's a good product. If you want extra features like colors, um, you know, metal case, or maybe a tripod that works, you might think of a different product.